good morning, everyone. We're all still here. How are you? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I didn't sleep much last night. I did the exact opposite. Uh, and by the way, if I could ask the guys in the truck, uh, studio monitor down just a little bit, lest we feedback. Um, I did the exact opposite. I decided for once, because it's been a long time, you and I being what we are and what we do for a living, and Clarence Bugs as well, being up late and usually on the air on election night is a normal thing. And filling time nonstop when they're not counting votes rapidly. I was watching, Marianne and I were not watching election results last night. We were watching uh, Science Channel. We just wanted to unplug from the whole mess. So we were watching Science Channel. Now, I did have my phone open with the Secretary of State's website, and I was watching returns as they started to come in. But as I was telling Clarence before the show, um, Along about 9.30, uh, the eyelids started to get a little heavy, and I said, you know what, this will all happen with or without me. And yeah. off I went to Betty Bye. And I well, had a wonderful night's sleep, and I didn't have dreams of Joe Biden presidencies uh, haunting my, um, my sleep. And, uh, we, we, so. had, we had some fun food to bolster us early in the evening. And then at about 10.30, Karen chucked it in. I think I lasted about another hour and a half or so. And, you know, like you, I said, now nah, what's going to be is going to be, and I need yep. to get some rest. It was hard to get up this morning. But, you know, it, 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 it's all part of the process. And Karen looked at me, she said, you're not wearing a tie today? And I said, no. I said, I've got, I've got the closest uh, thing that's warm that looks like a blend of red and blue since we don't know. By the way, would you believe I've got a mock, that is, a mock turtlenecks a shirt at home that is exactly that same color? Well, you have good taste. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the this, fact that we do the podcast on Wednesdays before we do the television show, we're always going to be a little bit more informal than we well, are. Well, I, I needed some warmth today. I got a chill this morning at about 5.30 that will not go away. Now, Clarence always wears a tie. I don't think I've ever seen Clarence in a jacket and a turtleneck or a mock turtleneck. Well, back in the day, you used to see Clarence wearing his flight suit from time to time. But it's been a long time since I've seen Clarence in the flight suit. Now, Clarence always has a perfectly knotted necktie. Perfectly knotted. So let's take a look at it. We have uh, six states that they say too early to call, and this is the result of mail-in ballots. Mm. Uh, I knew the minute that they started talking well, about oh, mail-in ballots. Not just mail-in, early voting, too, because those are all. those were all... They couldn't open those until the election polls were closed. And different states have different yeah. systems. You know, our system works in such a way as that when they unlock the early voting, it just goes like a torrent and go wham. Yeah. Because it's all in there and it's all digital, and all they got to do is dump it into the system, and there it is. Well, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, our Secretary of State's, both Tom Shedler and now Kyle Ardwan have developed a very good, very secure, very rapid system for Louisiana. Yep, and I think we should be the, the model for other states. Um, but because of early voting and absentee ballots and mail-in voting, uh, we've got six states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, and Georgia, mm -hmm. that they say still too early to call. Uh, vote counting is underway. Um, in pure count right now, um, Joe Biden is in the lead with 69,679,000 votes uh, counted. Donald Trump, 67,107,000 uh, counted, which that leaves them... so close. And on the uh, 270 is what you need in electoral votes to win, and Biden is ahead, 238 to Trump's 213. But that's, you know, that is... That is a very narrow margin, too. And it could be days before we know who our next president will be. So we're going we're gonna to have to wait and see. Uh, for our viewers in the Lafayette area, in Acadiana, uh, it appears that Congressman Clay Higgins really surprised an awful lot of people. I think there were people who thought that Higgins would not get another term. There were many people that were saying that, and it wasn't just because they were backing the opposition, uh, but they said, you know, he's played his string out, and it's time for somebody else. What did he get, 63% of the vote? 68. 68% of the vote. 68% of the vote got, went to Congressman Higgins. And here's why I think that he, there may be people who weren't all that happy with his representation or his style, but he was the only Republican. He, didn't, he did not have a Republican challenger. Mm -hmm. That's a very Republican district. Yeah. And um, 
to give you an idea, his nearest competitor was Braylon Harris, a Democrat, 18 percent. 18 percent. Now, maybe if he'd had a GOP challenger, that might have been a narrower margin, and he may have even you know risked uh, being unseated. But uh, Clay Higgins goes back. Cedric Richmond goes back. Uh, Steve Scalise, with an amazing 72 uh, percent, goes back for another term. Uh, of course, Mike Johnson up in District 4 in the Shreveport area in North Louisiana, he goes back. And Congressman Garrett Graves with 71 percent, back for another two years. Uh, what's still up in the air is the 5th Congressional District, which was a wide open race. Yeah, because uh, Ralph Abraham said he's not running again, he's retired. Uh, and uh, uh, his, one of his former staffers uh, garnered the most votes and will be in a runoff with Lance Harris. Yep. Now, I think a lot of people thought Lance Harris had, because this was, this was a Republican running against a Republican in a wide open seat, and Lance Harris is a well-established Louisiana uh, state representative. Mm -hmm. He's been in the state legislature for a good long time, and I think a lot of people thought that he would have the advantage over a relatively unknown quantity like Luke Letlow. But I think voter sensibilities are changing, and some people are taking that, no, nah, you've had your turn at the trough, it's time for somebody new. I think that's, we're, we're beginning to see that sort of attitude sometimes. Mm -hmm. So the, the one to watch, though, was the mayor's race in St. Francisville. Was it? This was one of these where the people have spoken. It, 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 it's so odd. They have had the same mayor for 36 years. That is nine terms. Uh, William Billy Dakia was elected in 1984. So last night, Republican Robert Leake defeated Independent Susie Tully by winning 467 votes out of the grand total of 823 votes that were cast. Now, now that doesn't sound like a lot, but let's put it in another term. That was a 73% voter turnout. You're kidding. St. Francisville's a small town. They only have 1,100 voting age citizens in St. Francisville? All I can tell you is the Secretary of State's office says official turnout 73.9%. So 74% turnout in St. Francisville. Wow. For a vote that's going to be, well, it was decided by uh, 110 votes. And again, this guy's got a goofy name. Look at his, look at his nickname. Take a look. Uh, it's Bobby. No, it's Bobby. Is it Bobby? They pronounce it Bobby? Well, he may pronounce it Brownie because he's from St. Francisville, but it's B O B E E, which Robert, would be Robert Bobby. Lee. It's like, you know what, Mr. Sir, by the, now that you're going to be mayor, it needs to be Mayor Robert Leake. Congratulations to you, by the way. Uh, his independent, no Democrat challenging in that. This is a Republican mayor. Mm -hmm. An independent, Suzanne Susie Tully. Uh, coming up the winner there. And with, with, with Kenny Havard being parish president, there would be no fat chicks in the race. Uh-huh. Just, uh, there, there were some surprises last night. Uh, I was surprised uh, watching uh, the Baton Rouge elections. Uh, my Metro Councilman, uh, right before I went to bed, I looked at it, it's like his challenger, uh, it's uh, Dwight Hudson, the mm -hmm. incumbent in uh, my district, District 9, and his challenger, Jim Mora, was ahead. And I went to bed thinking, well, my guy might not have a job uh, on the Metro Council come tomorrow morning. Yeah, he, 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 was, did, he did uh, eke it out in the end when all the votes were counted, and uh, Dwight Hudson will return to the Baton Rouge Metro Council. The, the, the thing that surprised me the most in the race for the United States Senate is I didn't doubt that Bill Cassidy was going to be returned to the Senate. But... I thought that it was very interesting that this young man, Derek Edwards, mm -hmm. uh, who has run before for something else, I think he ran for United States Congress, I'm not sure, uh, but he ran with almost no funding. He did have a big endorsement from Representative Cedric Richman, mm -hmm. and he had another endorsement from somebody that was not in a federal office, and that was it. He spent very little money, and he got 13% of the vote. 11. 11%, excuse me. Where Adrian Perkins, the current mayor of Shreveport, that Who the spent Democratic. A yeah. Ton of money. Oh, millions. 
The Democratic National Committee put millions of dollars into his campaign, and he only got, what was it, 16 percent? 19 percent. Yeah, 19. In actual votes, only 393,866 Louisianans voted for Adrian Parkinson. And Bill Cassidy... That compared to over 1.2 million votes for Bill Cassidy. By the way, the first candidate for the United States Senate in Louisiana in history to hit the one million vote mark. Yep. It kind of belies that you you can actually buy an election. It kind of belies that. Uh, and it, I, I, I say what this is what it tells me. If you're going to run against an incumbent, you better have something more than a mouthful of lies to yeah. run on. He, that was a very foolish move he uh, made. There were, there were claims made in Mr. Perkins' ads that uh, even someone as pedestrian in me, as me knew were patently not true. Um, and when did it change? I remember in 2010, when Charlie Malasson was running against David Vitter mm -hmm. for his U.S. Senate seat, that the ads had to cite where their claims were coming. No, never something changed. Change. Never changed. But I, see, I remember the, the, the ads attacking, uh, the Vitter ads that attacked Charlie Malasson as standing at the border holding the the fence open and handing out checks as people can't, as illegal aliens cross the border. And there, me, were, there were citations in that ad saying let this me, is what we're basing this on. Let me tell you what the rule is. A candidate for federal office, which means United States House of Representatives, Senate, President, you cannot censor or require anything as long as it is a use by the candidate. Now, if you're a PAC, if you're a PAC, if you you're got a PAC, you have to cite it, and and okay. it can be removed if it turns out that you are incorrect or deliberately being false. Come but, to think of it, that Charlie Malasa ad was not bitter. It was it was a PAC supporting. Yeah, it. that's the and people get political that, action committee for those people get PAC. that confused. But actually, in in the letter of the law, if I were to pay my twenty five hundred dollars to run for United States Congress in two years. I could buy television time on this station, on any other station, and I could sit in front of a camera for 30 seconds and say nothing but the seven words you can't say on TV, and they can't do anything about it. They really? can't censor it. They can't refuse to air it. None of that. Hmm. I can appear naked and say Please the seven words, and they can't do it. It applies only to federal office and wow. a use by the candidate. Wow. So it can't be a supporting group. It has to be actual use by the candidate. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's time we change that? Should a candidate be allowed to lie? You know what? I think we all I assume mean, that many of them do, shall we say, shape the truth. You know, it's like, uh, what was it in the, in the last congressional race where somebody was saying, you know, and, uh, and, and oh, it was the governor's race. Uh, he, he voted with Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, they were voting. Technically, it was correct. They were voting to adjourn. Or they were voting to name a post oh, yeah, they office. Were they were clobbering Ralph Abraham over the head with that. Yeah. He, voted, he voted 37 times with Nancy Pelosi. And they were, they were simple procedural votes like, you know, so the thing is... We move to adjourn. All, all with us? Yeah, okay. Well, he voted with Nancy! Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's the whole thing. So I think we know that the BS is going to continue no matter what. Wow. And um, I, I think when the FCC made that regulation regarding political advertising in the 60s, I think it was rather wise because you would have had people that would have tried to censor candidates uh, if, for example, there was a time when most of the television stations were owned by very starch, staunch Republicans. Mm -hmm. Not so much anymore. Yeah, but they would have tried to censor. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know, but I, I, but, but I think it bothers a lot of people who don't understand that you cannot, if it's a use, I mean, I spotted that what Perkins was saying with Bill Cassidy and healthcare was completely false. Yep. 
but he's running for a federal office. It was his own so use of the airtime, so you can't do anything so about it. So he can make the claim, and he can he can win or be hung by his neck with on those claims. Yeah, we are late to a break, so we'll take a break. We'll come back in a moment on Exiles We're always, TV. We're always late to the break. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats, taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Welcome back. Hey. Glad to have you along on Exiles TV this morning. Uh, joining us is a uh, political analyst and professional uh, uh, political consultant, Roy Fletcher. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that's your one time. <laughs> Roy, good to see you. Thanks for Savor it while you can. Um, yeah, we really. <laughs> uh, we should disclose that you had a candidate who, coming from out of nowhere, did quite well in the mayor's race, and that is Jordan Piazza. But let's talk a little bit about the mayor's race in general yeah. here. What, what kind of factors came into play? I, it, I mean, it's obvious, it's clearly obvious that a name ID and being around a long time was basically what people were interested in. And uh, because uh, Matt Watson, the mayor, Carter and uh, Denise, mm -hmm. they all soaked up most of the vote. And, and, and it was hard to find a place to run an outsider. Uh, and I, I don't think it's because people are terribly satisfied with what they have, but they're not certain about what they would have gotten. But I think that Jordan, in the end, acquitted himself so well that he won't be... Uh, seen that way from the, in the future. And well, I think expect he'll have a good future ahead of him. I, I think it's phenomenal that they were going to eliminate him from a debate because he was polling less than 2% just four weeks ago and he finished with a, a well, pretty well. 10 and a half, 11 percent of the vote. Yeah, and we got whacked really hard in the early vote because we weren't able to get the money to get on TV until about halfway through the early vote and you know it takes a few, little, few days for TV to sink in and so consequently it, that, that was sort of his uh, downfall. Let me ask you a couple uh, uh, of procedurals. Besides me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> if Matt Watson had been able to raise as much money as Steve Carter, mm -hmm. and I don't think Matt actually was able to do any mass media at no, all, 
would it have made a difference with his high name recognition? I will, I will tell you that here's the way I see that. I think that in the end, Jordan sort of blocked Matt, and Matt sort of blocked uh, Jordan. I think they kind of were pulling for the same types of people with the same sort of orientation. And yeah, I think that uh, I think that he would have, uh, I think, yeah, if he had money, he might have done a little better than what he did. But, you know, I think he ran a pretty darn good campaign with a little money. Well, I, I mean, he was served his district, it's pretty obvious that he served his district well because they sort of rewarded him with a good vote. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I, I think it's very true, with few exceptions, um, when I used to buy a lot of media. Mm -hmm. I used to say, you're not just buying a television commercial or a radio spot, you're buying credibility. Yeah. Because John Q. Public thinks that radio and television is outrageously expensive and therefore a lot of people must be giving you big campaign yeah. contributions yeah. Right. and they don't want to do that right. with somebody they don't trust or can't win. Yeah, that's right. And I, and I think if you're a council member with a good reputation like Matt and you can't raise enough money to get on television, I think it hurts you. I don't think I don't think there's any question about it. But yeah, you know, he did well in his district, and it's the people he served. So I'd be complimented on that. What do you think about the role of social media now? I mean, Matt was one that he took to social media. And he I mean, had commercials, but they largely aired on social yeah, media. I don't think it had anything to do with it, and I don't think it had much to do with the election. Uh, I was really, uh, uh, I mean, for example. You take Matt and what he did with social media. Well, you take Jordan, and nobody really talked about this, but the first little two or three minute spot that we had on social media had about 160,000 views. Okay? I mean, that was obviously something, but it, it, social media ultimately doesn't move the doesn't, needle that much. Doesn't translate into votes. No, it well, doesn't. It's very hard. You gotta, as you know, Bill, it's frequency. And it's intruding into people's lives when they're watching TV. I mean, it's just you get in their living room or well, wherever. And again, if you're if you're lucky and you're a candidate, and it falls behind something someone respects, like Our Lady of the Lake or Baton Rouge yeah, General, yeah. a little of that a little of that halo effect yeah. comes on to you because you're right. shoulder to shoulder with an institution or a business that That's is right. on TV 365 days a year that people love. Now, I want to ask you one more question, because, and I'm not trying to be snarky here, uh, <laughs> but if I were running a candidate, or if I were a candidate against an incumbent that I knew was going to get big numbers, mm -hmm. I would have had a commercial that said, four years ago, she ran as a candidate, a key linchpin was replacing a police chief that had our murder level down to a 10-year low. And now, we're having 1.5 murders every day. How's that working for you? And none of the candidates did that. Yeah, and, and I, think that, uh, I think that there was probably several reasons for that. Uh, I mean, besides, he's from Ascension Parish. He lives there. Uh, and and, and Jordan, was, Jordan was on that, uh, but the crime issue, got framed and probably should have been in the context of the, the number of homicides and that sort of thing and and the and the situation with the police and how much they made and and that all pulled really well and and so uh, the police chief not so much didn't didn't really it just didn't drive anybody but the cops pay and 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 by the way I hope they get I hope they get ten thousand a year because they can afford to give them ten thousand a year, and they deserve that at, de at least. And 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 the and the number of homicides we're driving. It All right, much. we're not going to miss this break. So here's what we're going to do: we're going to continue with political consultant extraordinaire and campaign advisor and political analyst and snappy dresser Roy Fletcher in just a moment let's, on Exiles TV. Let's talk. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. 
From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Surprise! Something good has finally happened in 2020. Yours truly, The Clarence Bug Show, gets to be with you every day of the week. That's right, 11 to 12 every weekday. And of course, The Exiles, right in front of yours truly, from 10 to 11, yours truly, 11 to 12. So now, it's appointment viewing. Five days a week, here on The Pelican. The Clarence Bug Show, the only thing missing is you. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Right now, during the Team Honda Upgrade event, get a new 20 Accord Sport for just $309 a month with no money down, no first payment, and no security deposit. It's time to upgrade to your new Honda at Louisiana's number one new car dealer, Team Honda, on Seagan Lane. This is Exiles TV. Appreciate you being with us. Our guest is Roy Fletcher, political analyst and a campaign consultant. And uh, the the one thing I want to ask you before we move on to national politics mm -hmm. about the East Baton Rouge mayor president's race is the power of incumbency. She barely had to campaign. She was able to, I don't want to say hide behind, but she was able to avoid a lot of campaigning by saying, hey, I got this COVID crisis. I'm trying to guide the city parish through the COVID crisis, which I'm sure she wasn't out, you know, leading a team of dogs or anything. Uh, but you know, uh, she she comes up, she you know, easily makes a runoff without really having a campaign. She, uh, I mean, and I told you when before when you were going to ask me a question. So did Joe Biden, and and that'd be the point I would make. And a COVID sort of gives these candidates an excuse for doing that, and I'm not sure that uh, that the public ought to give them that well, excuse, but they do. Particularly when you're an incumbent. Yes, absolutely. No question about that. Incumbency was very powerful last night in, in, in a lot of races, and it still may be important in one. Well, the margins on uh, the federal races, the margins on Cassidy and Clay Higgins and Steve Scalise and Garrett Graves, Garrett Graves and Mike Johnson and Cedric Richmond, all incumbents. Those margins were huge. Yeah, and as they should have been. I mean, I was glad to see Bill Cassidy do as well as he did last night. He, he did a really, really good job. Uh, on the national, where do you see this presidential race going uh, from here? Uh, and how soon uh, do you think we, it might be? We, we, we got a number of issues. Okay, so. So, uh, first of all, the state of Arizona is still in play. I hope nobody thinks that's over, even though it was called. 
There's about a half a million ballots left out in Arizona. The, the remaining ballots, they're counting them now, and it's running at about a 70-30 rate for Trump. Mm -hmm. And uh, the White House believes... Well, is, is it true, is it true that, that Maricopa County is pretty much all that Biden's going to get, that the rest yes. of it's going to go to Trump? Yes. And, and Maricopa but, County but, is but, counted, right? Yeah, but at 70-30 rate, and, yeah. and, and that gives, that gives uh, Trump about a 30 to 50,000 vote win in Arizona. Uh, we don't know about Nevada. Now, why is Arizona so important? Because here's the path to victory, and then we'll deal with Michigan and Wisconsin, and, and we're going to have to deal with Georgia. But the path to victory is Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Arizona. Uh, and Alaska is going to be the three, to give it three. So it gives you 274. So uh, we got a, there's about a 50,000 vote lead in Georgia right now. They're still counting in Fulton. There's a real question of whether or not That'll sustain itself, but under Georgia law, you don't have recounts. So if it sustains itself at 10,000, that's what it's going to be. Okay. North Carolina, they don't know what's out in North Carolina. They say there's 6%. There's a 77,000 vote lead. I think that's going to be safe. So that gets us to Arizona, which I just dealt with, and then it gets us to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is 560,000 votes. Literally, there's enough, pe there, there's enough people saying, and I believe this, that there's, uh, that, that there's not enough votes to steal Pennsylvania. Not that they won't try. Not that they won't try. But there's not enough votes to steal it. And if, that's the, if, if Trump runs that, then he's 274 and he wins the election. Now, of course, there's a Biden scenario, too, mm -hmm. which is uh, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan and maybe I don't know what else. And maybe, maybe Georgia. Georgia. Maybe, maybe Georgia. Yeah. Maybe Georgia. Okay. So, so what happened in Michigan? What happened in Michigan last night is, I think, is absolutely a necessity to audit mail-in ballots now, especially in those two states. At four o'clock this morning, Central Time, five o'clock Eastern Time, 140,000 ballots were dumped into uh, 140,000 ballots were dumped into uh, from Wayne County into the system. Literally. Wayne County is Detroit. Detroit. Detroit, yes. Literally, Trump got no votes. That's not That's possible. That's almost prima, 100, huh? 100% Biden. That is almost, not possible. That is almost prima facie case for corruption. I mean, it is, it is statistically unheard of. That's Chicago Kennedy Nixon. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, I recall that to somebody last night talking to him on the phone. I said, this is not the first time we've seen this. And he, what are you talking about? I said, Richard Nixon had a serious complaint in, two, in 1960 because of the 118,000 votes that were dumped in Cook County. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's 140,000, 138, I think the text uh, email there. 140,000 uh, votes dumped out of Wayne County, and that changed the race dramatically in Michigan. It's, now, it's not possible statistically. No, Nobody no, is that so, stupid. So, and so there's some indices that that, that was going on out of, uh, out of Milwaukee. So the question is, it's, I think that that calls, it begs for an audit of every one of those mail-in ballots. So I don't think that we can just simply say that those two states are decided. I think that the press will try to do that in order to keep of course. the 140,000 votes from being looked at. Okay? That's what I think will well, happen. It should not be up to the press as to whether or not those no, should but, be looked at. But, but let's understand what the press did last night. The press in, in Virginia called that thing early. And then all of a sudden, and they had to run backwards. They had they? to run back mm -hmm. from it for a while. They it finally ended up where they thought it might end up. But Arizona was a terrible call because there were so many ballots out in Arizona, and the mail in in Maricopa had already been counted. And every but there was still six hundred thousand ballots out. And then once they got through the first hundred thousand, and they know that Trump is running in a seventy thirty clip. They pretty well know that he's going to uh, he's going to end up winning Arizona. Well, and, and again, I thought an analyst who was looking at it analytically and correctly was because one of the other people on the set, and I can't remember who I was watching because I was flipping around, mm -hmm. said, "Well, you win Maricopa County, you win the whole thing." And the other one said, "Wait, wait, wait, 
Mm. This is the fastest growing state in yeah. the nation. Yeah. So that might have been true four years ago. Yes, You've got to wait for everybody in Arizona. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that was Major Garrett again calling Maybe BS. So. Maybe so. Bill Himmer on, uh, I think it's Fox, I believe that's where he's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's still at Fox. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 made, he made a point about that. He made a point about Michigan, Wisconsin, and that several times last night. I thought that was really good. And, 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 uh, uh, but, but the Arizona thing is a real big deal. Michigan troubles me. Anytime you've got a big ballot dump and it goes 100 percent. It's not that's possible. It's statistically I said, impossible. I said it's prima facie case. It, 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 it creates a reasonable doubt that a corruption occurred. I, I mean, at least that. I would right now today be willing to sit and look at every one of those personal. That's what they should. I don't should. believe it. They should it. audit every one of those mail-in ballots. I mail don't believe it at all. No, nobody does. Time for another break. We're going to take care of business. Be right back with Roy Fletcher on Exiles TV. And I wouldn't believe it if. It Bellello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bellello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. I've seen a lot of things during my life, more bad things than good. I've lived in a lot of places, but never a home. I don't think anybody cares about me anymore. And now, I'm tired. Signed, Brian, age 11. Abused and neglected children in East Baton Rouge Parish are in dire need of CASA volunteers. Please call 379-8598 today. Change a life of hurt into a life of hope. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Welcome back to Exiles TV. Glad to have you along with us this morning. Ah, we won't know who the President of the United States is, States is until, um, what, maybe December 1st? Maybe. maybe? The, the, well, we have to know about, what, it's December 9th, I believe, the Electoral College meets? Yeah, I, I think we have yeah, to know so, by December I think it's 9th. The, con the concern for me is, Roy, is that we're already seeing evidence that there's chicanery going on, that there's, that there's cheating, that there's attempts to steal this election. We just talked about a huge, uh, in Michigan, a huge overnight ballot dump, ballot dump mm -hmm. that they were 100% Biden. 
No district goes 100% for any candidate. No, no. No district. The Lord didn't do but 92% with the disciples. Mm -hmm. 11 out of 12. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, Which I'm just saying. That's I not mean, bad. You know, I don't want to get way out there. Uh, and th this is the thing. It's like if you're going to cheat, at least cheat smart. Yeah. So that it doesn't stink to high heaven from the very onset. Well, well the good news is Bill brought it up, and I, I brought it up last night. People forget this, but Bill's from Cook County, mm -hmm. Chicago. My first so, vote so for Cook County. But in 1960, there was 118,000 votes da da uh, dumped by Mayor Daley mm -hmm. that, that won the state of Illinois for John Kennedy. And so the old line was is that, well, how many votes you got? down there still out well how many do you need how many do you need yeah but you know, that that's the thing i mean this is not the first election nor will it be the last where there's going to be as kevin put it some chicanery the trouble is when it gets to be an, an epic and unbelievable scale yes like 140,000 votes that all filled out for the same guy yeah. so now you gotta know who did it someone's yeah. insulting now, our intelligence now no we we just heard we, we, uh, in the break, and I don't know if it's true yet, because i got to verify this, that there's 100,000 more votes cast in Wisconsin than there are registered voters. Yeah. Now, we don't know that that, we, we, again, the, I have not verified that. But if that is the case, then that, that is another prima facie case of, of, of evidence. And it's also a case of, of uh, that, 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 is, uh, that comes directly from people voting mail-in ballots and voting at the polls or it's that's excessive to somebody's me, voting excessive at least a 50,000 right or of a hundred thousand at the onset of this COVID-19 thing almost immediately upon the states locking down and stuff they started talking about mail-in ballots and I said there's your avenue to stealing an yeah, election absolutely. right there yeah. whether you're stealing it for Trump or stealing it for Biden you're there's stealing. your avenue to steal an election it. and 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 it, and it was uh it was ripe for abuse. There were states where you didn't even have to sign the ballot. But you know, Roy, oh, come on. Roy, I'm, Kevin. How do you verify you know, a mail-in ballot that's, if there's no And that's signature? evidence rare trail, and that's, you, well, you have to have that. What, what I see is, again, what, what we've you, had in our society for the last few years is magic words. Magic words. Yes. You're disenfranchising, that's the magic word, yeah. You're hurting a lot my feelings. of voters who are afraid to come out to the polls. Yeah, right. The thing is, this is me talking. My opinion, my opinion only. You can only be disenfranchised by yourself. Yeah. You know what? If you're 92 years old and you're not feeling well, but you really, really want to vote, as evidenced by that lady in uh, Florida, you will find a way to cast your vote. You do not need, once you start making accommodations for the process because of a magic word that nobody wants to call BS on. They don't, it's not pretty. Well, you, it, it's you not know, nice. it, it goes to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, that's right. Well, in states were allowing mail-in ballots to be received the day before the election. If you're gonna do mail-in ballots, I think a week. And if you don't make the deadline, we're sorry, your vote's not counted. Sorry. Well, it, you it, had months again, to get that mail in ballot. But again, we have magic words. Uh, here's my thing we can have magic words and all that. My point would be this everybody's got one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make, if you're going to cast a mail in ballot, that's, that's how you sign it, right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. you, go, you go and you get thumbprint. that thumbprint. Yep, thumbprint. And, and then, we have ways, and then you have a system. But I know what will happen. If we did that, people would start screaming, oh my God, your government's going to know my front thumbprint and I didn't give it to anybody. Well, you're disenfranchising people well, with no yeah. thumbs. Yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's, well, that's a good point, too. Yeah, Ron Emanuel will be in trouble. I didn't think about that. But here's the deal. If, 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 Clyde. My client doesn't have any thumbs. All right. You remember this, you know, when we started asking for positive identification, no, people wouldn't. screamed and it's yelled. It's a simple little thing like a photo ID. It's yeah. like, oh my God, you can't have that. You can't do that you're, because you're, you're disenfranchised. You want to write a check at the Magic grocery store, word. you better have Magic it. word? I just wanted to repeat that for you, Billy. You know By what? the way, we made, we made voting safer than going to the grocery store. Uh, you know, so I just don't understand it. 
Well, then you've also got, you know, a long-standing tradition in the United States military, which just has been partially fixed, mm -hmm. is if you are stationed overseas in the military or you're stationed away from your, uh, your state of residence mm -hmm. and you do a mail-in military ballot, which happens every election, mm -hmm. you know, all over the world, those aren't counted unless it's considered to be close. That's interesting. I think that's a sin. Now, they just that's remedied true. that about a month and a half ago. But it's going to take time for that to get down the chain of command in all of the services, except for maybe Space Force. Uh, you know, uh, and we have, in trying to make accommodations for people, we have, in my opinion, screwed up the elections system. Well, there's no doubt. If, we, if you don't think it's screwed up, just check it today. Because today's pretty good evidence that it's screwed up. Right. Uh, but, 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 it's, but it's screwed up in one way right now, which is, uh, could be, a wholesale effort on mail-in ballots to stack an election. Well, Absolutely. Is, just show of hands. Does anybody truly trust the United States Postal Service? Hands? Anybody? Billy, I don't trust anything. But here's the whole deal. Now, let me ask y'all a question. So, so let's say this has got to be under investigation, and and the Fed's got to. So, y'all, I wish to ask y'all a simple question. Y'all trust the FBI? Not anymore. Thank you. Do you trust the Department of Justice? Not anymore. Well, the Department of Justice is the FBI. Yeah, is the, let me ask you a question. Do you trust the media? No. No. I want to say one thing, and it's just in my business. What was done in Poland by the media outlets in this country is criminal in this campaign. ABC, one of the major three networks, on Thursday before the election, on Tuesday, had Donald Trump down 17 points in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Un, I, I remember I was that was on Wednesday. I was screaming about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. On on uh, Ohio, they had Donald Trump down eight. He won by five. It was Thirteen points went. That was like four days. Pennsylvania. What did they have in Pennsylvania? That, that they had to, riding up seven like a mammoth or whatever the name of the damn poll was. Mm -hmm. They had him up by seven on Sunday. I mean, down seven on Sunday in Pennsylvania, and he mopped the floor in Pennsylvania. Well, again, here's the whole thing. I don't think suppression. They, I don't think that that anybody but a candidate and the people working for that candidate should be involved in polling. I don't I, think I media, didn't out, believe with you. I media agree. outlets should not be involved in polling because, first of all, they don't do it very well. And they're trying to do it quick so they have different numbers every other night. So you beat the other which, guys. Well. Well, I don't even think that comes into it, Kevin. I just think that they're very sloppy. They don't get a big enough sample size. They don't follow the proper chi-squared scientific method for a margin of error because they want to get something on the air. Bill, Bill, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, he's Peter Hart. He was wrong. Uh, the, uh, the ABC people were using a, a reputable pollster. There, there were reputable pollsters that reported this garbage. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Traffica, which is, they talk about being a bunch of dogs, was right on in almost every state. Rasmussen was right, which they talk about mm -hmm. like a dog, was right on nationally. I mean, the quality of polling is about them. Well, it is. And, and what, what is the result you want? I want it quick so I can yeah, get it on the air. Well, that's true. When we come back, I want to take a look at the Senate and the House. And good. How that's shaping up. They're good. Roy Fletcher is our guest on Exiles TV, and we will be right back. It's the feeling. 
Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Right now, choose any new 20 Mazda and get 0% for 60 months, plus 90 days deferred payments during the Team Mazda Upgrade event happening now at Team Mazda on Airline. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bud Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make Phase 3 the best it can possibly be. We're back with Exiles TV. We're talking about some of these uh, things that are uh, turning up on some social media and Twitter posts and everything. Uh, this I'm about to read you is not entirely accurate because Bill checked it out during the commercial. But this is a tweet from a Mike Cowdery. It says, Wisconsin has more votes than people who are registered to vote. Total number of registered voters, 3.129 thousand. Okay, 3,129,000. Total number of votes cast in Wisconsin. 3,239,920. Direct evidence of fraud, says the poster. Bill uncovered that actually... Yeah, I, I went to the Wisconsin Elections Commission website and I asked a specific question. I asked how, how many, many registered, registered voters? voters in 2020 and their report of uh, November 1st, so just a few days ago, was 3.6 Four six one three okay, so, so this three point seven. But okay, but still, three million two hundred thirty nine thousand votes cast is ninety something percent. Ninety six percent. That state has ninety percent turnout. Yeah. Ninety six. See, I I question that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, either way, either way, that don't look right. <laughs> Real quick, because we've only got uh, three minutes and forty seconds left. I don't, I don't think the House is uh, the Democrats are in any danger of losing the House. Well, how's the Senate shaping up? It looks like that we're going to be able to hold the Senate. Mel Tillis looks like he's going to win there. It looks like John James is going to flip a seat in Michigan. And that would mean two flips for us and I think two flips for them because they did not win it's, uh, the, the lady in Maine, so Susan Collins. She didn't win? No, no she's, she's, she she's winning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but Martha McSally was a seat loss. She, uh, she, she and Corey Garner, which I said, I, I thought McSally may be saved, but Garner was always gone. What uh, What is uh, the uh, former astronaut doing in in uh, Arizona? How's he doing? Uh, he won. He did win. Yeah, they declared it. Well, let's put it this way. I think he won. Okay. Because I mean, there's still a lot of votes to be counted. There's a lot of votes to be counted in Arizona. That's uh, Mark Kelly. Mark He's Kelly. Yeah, Mark husband Kelly. of Gabby yeah. Giffords. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he was in, Max Sally was endorsed by the other uh, astronaut out there. I forgot who it was. So, yeah, we're going to, so we're going to have status quo violence in the Senate. Huh? 
It looks like about 51 Republicans, uh-huh. 51 Republicans, and you know, so it looks like they, they hold the Senate. Uh, we did pretty well in the House, considering. Mm-hmm. I thought we did okay there, and uh, the Republicans did, I say we. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm Republican. And I am Republican, and uh, the uh, so so yeah. I think that it, it was an interesting night because here's what was so fascinating about the night: Trump, in his glory, r- built the Republican Party again in a different way than even what he had done before. He was a guy, a Republican, in 34 percent of Hispanic vote, 58 percent of Cuban vote, and was running 12 and 13 with black vote. That is unheard of as a Republican. Well, again, and Republican national candidates and federal candidates always get all the Cuban vote, okay? Yeah, well, they do. But for to get 12% of the African-American vote is uh, 58, unheard of. 58 among Cubans is really outstanding. Yeah. And we don't know what he got under with Venezuelans, but we do know Hispanic. Nationally, he ran 34%, which is really, really good. All right, uh, real quick before we have to go, do you have any candidates uh, that you've represented, represented that are going into runoffs? Yeah, Melanie uh, Newcomb Jones, of Court of Appeal, yes. and I, I had another race in uh, Southwest Louisiana, one outright. So, but her, she's Court of Appeal. She, I think, she surprised everybody. She spent very little money and did really, really well. well and uh, now, whether or not she can win. It's another story, but, you know, that's why they have runoffs. Uh, Roy and I will expound a little bit more on the results of election night with Roy's weekly radio program, Fletch Nation. It's heard on nine radio stations across Louisiana. So uh, if you're in Slidell, listen on uh, WSLA and uh, on the WBRP here in Baton Rouge and on KPEL in Lafayette this weekend. Roy, thanks for being our guest. We oh, I enjoyed it. it very much. I and, always do. And again, everybody, this is... A Kesara Sara moment. What will be, will be. No sense getting all stressed out over this. The sun's still going to come up, God willing, tomorrow. Hang tight if you're a Trumpy. Yeah, just, Hang just, tight. just wait. Everybody just kind of be cool and wait. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back tomorrow. Be well, stay safe. God bless. Good.